that's good stuff. I'm sure my neighbors are loving me. <laughs> I'm sure my neighbors are just thrilled with my new toy. <laughs> okay, everyone. Welcome to my Sunday afternoon. Uh, today is a uh, day to get noisy. I'm swapping the uh, factory exhaust on the Rebel 1100 for the Kaufman's uh, shorty exhaust. Uh, I've got that same exhaust over here on my 500F. Really like the sound of it on that bike, it's great. Uh, and I don't like the look of this exhaust. The Honda exhaust sounds okay, but it, it looks like a suitcase on the side of the bike. It's gotta go. Uh, so I'm gonna get this underway before my camera's overheat because it's hot today. Uh, we've got the recording set up. I'm one meter back from the exhaust and about a uh, 30 degree angle, so I'm not in the exhaust puffs, the, which will taint the sound of the recording. So here we go, let's get this going. Uh, the motor has already been warmed up, so don't anybody rag on me saying that I'm beating up a cold motor. Uh, it's been warmed up and uh, full operating temp. So let's start her up. Okay, so here's the baseline for our factory exhaust. It's got a decent note to it. You know, it's deep enough, thumper-ish. Sounds okay, but uh, eh, really fugly. So uh, I'm gonna blip it a couple times and then I'll run it up uh, full red line and we'll get a baseline for our sound. Here we go. So there's our sound test, and uh, hopefully I didn't <laughs> oversaturate the uh, meters on that thing. Uh, these do a much better job of representing the sound. Now, you'll certainly want to listen to this with headphones on, but watch out when the exhaust notes come up. Uh, I'll try to level the sound out a little bit, but if you're a headphone wearer, that might be uncomfortable. So uh, I'll catch up with you in a bit. I'm going to take it out for a baseline run on the road. Uh, I'll do a flyby with a camera, and I'm also going to have a, an audio recorder attached to the back of my jacket, uh, kind of out of the wind stream, and uh, we'll be able to see what it sounds like on the road. I'll put the DCT in sport, do some downshifts, and uh, you'll get to hear the, the rev matching or throttle blips on it, and then we'll compare that to what the Kaufman sounds like. Catch up with you in a bit. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. All right. I'm sure my neighbors are loving me with all the exhaust revving and horn honking and you obnoxious bleep. Yep, sorry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take it down the road over here uh, to a uh, somewhat abandoned uh, little road over by uh, the shooting center. I should be able to set up the cameras there. I'm gonna do a dedicated audio recorder the same one that I was using to do the initial test you know baseline test I'm gonna set that up on the side of the road I'm gonna put my 360 camera and a uh, GoPro 8 just on the edge of the road and I'll do a couple of pullaways under full throttle uh, testing the sound of it and then I'll do a couple of ride bys flybys whatever you want to call them uh, on the throttle and then a couple more uh, with uh, downshift blips so we've got uh, kind of a overall sound of what it's going to be like cruising upshift downshift full throttle you name it so steady state you know rolling along at 55 60 miles an hour whatever out on the highway here in Houston nobody runs less than 70 75 so uh, I'm curious to know what the drone levels are you know as far as uh, how obnoxious the exhaust is uh, I guess I could yeah I'll do that on the way back I'll, I'll try to remember to put it in manual and set the rpm to sit there and hover right around 4200 rpm which is right about 70 75 miles an hour and uh, I'll record that with the uh, backpack recorder that I've got on here or the one that I have in my backpack I should say and that might give a good representation of what it sounds like uh, on the highway. And then I'll repeat that same test with the Kaufmans. Obviously, my ears are going to you know, be more sensitive than these mics as far as the 
subjective sound, uh, so it's kind of hard to relay that in uh, the videos. I have a slingshot. Those are neat, but uh, I wouldn't want one if I were to get a three-wheel car type uh, machine. It would definitely be the uh, Vanderhall. Oh, I like the Vanderhall. This thing just looks like a bathtub with one big rear wheel. Looks like a jacuzzi on three wheels. That's what it looks like. Sport, and hopefully everybody's listening and recording. Here we go. There's a good blip. You have to blip it from a pretty high RPM or you need to have been on full throttle before you close the throttle and start decelerating rapidly and then it'll do it for you. <laughs> Lift at the front end again. All right, let's get it up in second gear. Good timing. Put them away. Leave this thing running so I'm not just heat soaking the engine. Uh, put the stuff away. Go home, swap the exhaust. Try not to burn my hands off. It's going to be hot. Good blips. Good blips. I like those. I'm still a little uh, trepidatious about uh, banking this thing hard into corners. It just feels so alien to take a cruiser down that low and not be scraping something. Okay, time to uh, let this exhaust cool off for a few minutes and I'm going to swap it for the Kaufmans. Catch up at the end of a minute. Okay, I'm back after about an uh, hour and a half. I had some family chores to do and uh, had to let the bike cool off so that's been done and now it's uh, just friggin hot out here it's unbelievable friggin hot it's like 94 in the shade out here in the blazing sun on the driveway it's well over 100 ouch uh, okay so tools needed for the job oh let me back up uh, this Kaufman's that I've got here is not designed for the Rebel 1100 this is for the CB 500 series so the F X or uh, CBR 500R, but uh, the head pipe is exactly the same diameter, so I think it'll work just fine. Uh, so we need a 12 millimeter socket uh, ratchet to pull this off, and then the two clamping bolts that are down there below. And uh, to go back on, we just need a uh, 5 mil uh, hex key, uh, Allen key, to tighten up the clamp. And then, I don't know if you guys are seeing that on camera, but that is a 964 uh, hole. Uh, they include a pair of rivets with the kit, and uh, once you get your angle set where you want it, you drill through the original uh, mid-pipe, exhaust pipe, uh, to pin that guy on just so it can't back off. But I'm not going to do that initially here for this testing until I know that I like it and I'm going to keep it. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, get this done because I'm melting. You have to have a 12mm uh, wrench or socket on the other side of it because it's got a... Uh, a nut on the other side that's going to pivot when you try to turn this thing. Make sure I'm lefty loosey. Get on there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, I think I'll just do away with that extension and reverse this.
Come on, then. Come on. You can do it. All right, there it is. Gert, don't end up with the bike on your head. It's preferable. No, still too tight. There we go. I'll spin the nut off the back. Now, this thing has, uh, hey, this thing has uh, perforated washers, I guess, for weight savings, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there until I get the, uh, the bottom bolts loosened up. I don't know if you guys are able to see these. I'm trying to move my chest rig down a little bit for you. These are just pinch bolts on this collar. And then uh, on the muffler, there is a uh, one of those graphite ring gaskets uh, that you know, collar gaskets tapered. We're not going to need that for the uh, Kaufman's because it's just going to slide down over that uh, header all the way to the shoulder or mid pipe. Technically, it's not a header. And the other thing that I didn't mention, uh, but I will show you once I get this off of here, um, I was a little concerned at first about this uh, for two reasons. One, I'm not 100% sure if the catalyst is contained in here. I don't believe it is. I believe it's this right here. Uh, that's the catalyst in that uh, little midsection there. I'm thinking, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's, it's what it appears to be to me. Uh, and then the other uh, concern that I had was, if we needed support back here or if the pipe was just going to be dangly dangling but there is another uh, mid support right off of this uh, resonator or what i'm presuming is the catalytic converter so the pipe is fully supported and that little uh kaufman's hanging off the end is not going to cause a problem at all so that leaves this ugly thing that's going to be hanging there and i guess i'm going to have to pull the uh, battery box out and figure out where that comes out because this is a big honking monkey i don't know if that's for the passenger foot pegs at the same time or what but it is like solid heavy duty aluminum i don't know why you would need that to support this exhaust but anyway it's just going to be there empty naked can't do much about it so here we go get the tools out of the way get all the stuff out of the way so i don't lose it and try to angle you guys up so you can see the action and i've had this off uh a week ago when I tried this, but I realized I couldn't get my uh, other Kaufman's off of the 500F to test with, so I just put this one back on. Oh, come on now. It's very tight, and that uh, graphite gasket uh, hangs onto it. So, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that gasket. It came off this time. That's it, the, uh, this guy right here. Last time when I pulled it off, it stayed on the, uh, the exhaust pipe or the mid pipe. Uh, okay, so try not to scratch any of this up. Retain it for later. Uh, oh, I can show you the other side of it here. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but uh, it just says uh, exhaust, noise emission control information, blah, 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 80 dBA, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say anything about the catalyst being in here. So I don't know, you guys tell me. You think the catalyst is in there? It's pretty heavy. It's about a 12, 13 pound exhaust, maybe more. I'll put them on a scale in a little bit. Actually, maybe I should do that now before I put this little Kaufman's on there, eh? No, I gotta pull it back off to, uh, to drill it anyway. So this is just gonna be a test. <sighs> Here's the, I don't know if you guys can see the inside of the Kaufman's. You got a spark arrestor screen there and it looks like a V diverter right there past the screen. Uh, and then it's just a, uh, pretty much a hollow expansion tube with uh, packing around it and it's rebuildable. You can see the, uh, the circlip here that you can pop out and pull the uh, center baffle out of it. And I'm assuming it either has uh, steel wool or uh, fiberglass uh, batting in there. So uh, here we go. Doink. <laughs> love it. I love it. Now I just have to figure out what angle I want it to be before I drill it, but I'm not going to do that yet. So here's a, a close-up shot. You can see the, the flange of the Kaufman's butts right up against the uh, extruded flange or, you know, welded on flange that's on this uh, exhaust mid-pipe. And uh, you just butt it right down on there and I'm just going to clamp the hell out of it. Give it a shot. So what do you think angle-wise? Get off me, wasp. 
think uh, angled, no, no, no. I'm thinking, let's get the Kaufman's straight out this way. That way the tip is kind of angling this. So now I'm not going to have any problems with pannier back here because the exhaust is pointing outward and away. Uh, that was my problem with a lot of the other aftermarket ones that I've been seeing from Two Brothers and Vance and Hines. They're very much up like this, and they're going to be kind of pointing at your saddlebag if you've got bags. Uh, so anyway, this is pointing more out, and it's much lower. So we're going to see how this sounds in just a hot second. I'm going to clamp this monkey down, and we are going to fire up the machine. Should I show you what it sounds like without the exhaust first? <laughs> uh, I did this the other day. And holy bejesus, it's loud. Okay. Let's wake up the neighbor, shall we? This <laughs> is it's it's stupid loud. I mean, stupid. That doesn't sound too bad. But, it gets crazier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would give me a, a serious headache all day. You know, I might just go ahead and drill this while I'm at it because I don't want that thing flying off on the road. Man, I'm scratching the hell out of it. Uh, I think I will go ahead and drill it. What do you think, guys? I think I'm going to drill it. Let's get my angle set, and I'm just going to drill it. It's not going to hurt anything as far as the, uh, the other exhaust is concerned if I go back to it. So, what do we got? We got right there with the Kaufman's facing outward. Yeah. Just like that, right there. Which way am I going? Yep, that's the right way. Yeah, it looks square to me. Okay. I gotta get it past the rivet. There we go, it's set. Pull the, uh, set the gun on it and draw it up. <clears throat> Are we slipping? There we go. I don't put that in my tire lighter, do I? Okay, so she's riveted on. She's not going anywhere now. And then I'll put this clamp on there and just go full ape on it. This is going to sound good. I already know it is because I like it on the other bike. Sticking out a little much, but... Yeah, that's, that's very good. In fact, it sounds almost identical to uh, how it sounds on my 500F over there. I like it. The only thing I could do to change that angle a little bit is I could rotate it up a hair and that would bring it in, I think. I don't know, I might try that. Oh, that sounds good, man. Okay, let's do the same sound test I did earlier. Three blips uh, and then uh, rev it up to redline. Sure my neighbors are loving me. <laughs> sure my neighbors are just thrilled with my new toy. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. What I might do, I'm looking at the angle on this thing to see if I rotate. It looks like it could pull it in a little closer. I don't want to get it too close to the swing arm, obviously, but um, I don't know. I, what do you think? Just leave it there? I could roll it up about 10, maybe 15 degrees, 
but I kind of like it facing outward and not so much kind of upward. But it's, yeah, it's very solid. It's not going anywhere. I think I like it. I'm just going to leave it. Ride with it. See what I think. I'll go out and do the, the ride test and sound test. It's nowhere near my leg, anything. I mean, it's, it's way back here. It's not going to be in the way of the bags. It's good. Uh, even when I have the passenger foot pegs and the seat back here, it would be somewhere in this area. It's still below the foot. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a win. And the, that exhaust is only like $229 on Amazon. Uh, Amazon, or uh, Kaufman sells them direct on Amazon. So, anywho, I'm going to put all this stuff away so it doesn't self-destruct in the sun. And I'm going to take the uh, backpack and the audio recording gear and the camera gear back out. And we're going to do the same uh, drive-bys over in the, uh, the park area again. Okay, let's get this done. I'm hot. Yeah, I like the sound of that already. I don't really care for how far it sticks out, but I'll sort it out. Oops, I guess I better put this uh, waste trap on before it burns itself off. Uh, again, I'm really doing this just as kind of a test to see if I like it. And it's better, smaller, lighter than the, uh, the factory exhaust, but I really like uh, a Kropovich or... Uh, Remus. Uh, Remus would be fantabulous. I really like the Remus exhaust for the Africa Twin 1100, which is the same motor, so all they need to do is work up a different bend on it. Oh, it sounds better already. I like it. Ooh, and I feel better already moving with some airflow. Bad parking spot, dude. Oh, yeah, it's so much more growly. It's not obnoxious though. The sound uh, isn't overpowering. It's just uh, you know it's there. <laughs> I like the blips. Good stuff, man. Yep, definitely worth 220, 230 bucks. So again, this uh, exhaust is not designed for the Rebel 1100, and I just want to make that clear. This is actually for the CB500F or X. Uh, I'm sure you could probably put it on the 500 Rebel, uh, and I believe the same piece, uh, the same uh, exhaust, is also good for the CBR500R, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, anyway, but the header uh, or mid pipe, exhaust pipe is the same diameter, fits on there like a champ. And considering a lot of the other aftermarket exhausts out there are you know, four or five, six, seven hundred bucks, man, 229, and sounds good too. Oh, I don't want to sit here for a length of time. This is hot, hot. In fact, I might cheat. Nobody coming? Yep, I'm going to cheat. This black jacket is quite hot when you're sitting still, but as soon as you start moving, all the mesh, it flows a lot of air. I always get a tickle when I uh, lean this thing over that far in a corner, man. Just would not expect a cruiser to lean that far. Yep, I like the sound. Much more aggressive. The factory exhaust had a good deep tone to it. It just wasn't quite loud enough. And I'm not a loud pipes guy. Uh, anybody that's watched my videos for a while, you know, I'm not really much on the, the loud pipe thing. Uh, but this is purposefully loud. It's not just obnoxious to say, yes, listen to me. This sounds pretty damn good. Let's give her the beans, shall we? Yeah, that's not bad at all. So, I've got no one in front of me, thankfully. Hopefully no cops. Uh, so, cruising along 70 miles an hour, highway, 4,000 to 4,200 RPM. 
this is what I'd be listening to. I do not have my earplugs in right now. And I, I can tell you, this ain't bad. I hope you guys aren't looking at gnats like I am, because I just ran through a gnat storm. My visor is covered with about 20 gnats. Now that's very tolerable. So between 60, 70, it doesn't have a, an obnoxious groan. Uh, it's much like the one that's on the uh, 500F. You can barely hear the exhaust over the wind noise uh, at 70 miles an hour on the 500F, so it's quite good. And that's another Kaufman shorty, just like this one, with a silver tip instead of all black. Cool. I like it already. We're going to do the sound test, but I can already tell you this is staying on there. Once I get my factory accessories, I'll be touring this thing, uh, and I just need somewhere to hang some luggage on it. And uh, when the DinoJet PowerVision 3 has a tune for this, I will certainly be flashing it to remove the speed nanny up top, and it'll probably wake the bike up a little bit. Uh, I'll put a, a different air filter on here. I don't know that I'll do any air box mods, but I'll probably put a KN or some kind of free flow air filter on it and uh, in conjunction with this freer flowing exhaust it uh, should net a few ponies oh it's hot i really like the gauge on the uh, rebel here this is a very legible gauge it's in sunlight in the shade it's very very uh, high contrast i like it I think the menus are still a little fiddly. Uh, you got to be in the the right menu, and then you don't do select anymore. You do mode to change something in that menu. But normally, when you hit mode, it changes you to the other menu. It's cursor mode. I don't know. It's a weird setup. I'll get used to it eventually. That's a big bump. Alright, set up just like we did last time. Okay. Try to do it before the cameras overheat themselves and die. So good. All right, so I'll try to remember what I did last time. What did I do last time, everybody? Come on, give me a hand. Give me a hand. Uh, still in sport mode. I'm just going to do about a half throttle launch, uh, heading that way. Try not to uh, uh, do a header. So three, two, one. Here we go. Yep, traction control lift right over that little uh, depression. If it feels the front wheel lifting. It says nope. Okay, let's do it again. So, about a half throttle blast. I didn't even pay attention to how fast I was getting up to you last time. Anyway, three, two, one, here we go. up and moves. I'll do a flyby at about 30 or so and hit the gas. <laughs> Wheelie. 
half throttle wheelie on second. That's nice. Let's get another flyby. I don't remember my routine last time. I'm just playing this by ear. Half throttle, 50 miles an hour right there. Bam. All right, let's do a decel right by the camera. That's <laughs> so awesome. It's like driving a Porsche with a PDK or a BMW. I oh, no, I want to do a flyby going the other direction on a diesel. second gear. Giving the brakes a workout. <laughs> I love that. Oh man, that sounds so good now. Okay. Well, I had my fun. Put these away and uh, do some final thoughts. Have to put it in neutral to rev it. Ah, that sounds good, man, for a cheap exhaust. And I say cheap as in inexpensive, not cheap quality. These things are built really well. Uh, I've been very impressed with the one on my 500F. It's four or five years old. No problems with it at all. Real good build quality. I haven't had to rebuild mine, you know, pull the core and uh, rebuild it, anything like that. So, hell yeah, this is a win, man. Ah, liking it. All right, I'm going to shut all this stuff down. Uh, I'm going to record a quick one on my uh, cell phone for uh, Instagram. I need to figure out how to get rid of that. All right, that's next. Later. Not important now. Okay. I hate backpacks. I hate backpacks. I hate backpacks. I hate backpacks. Have I mentioned that I hate backpacks? I didn't even like them when I was going to school. Okay. Chest strap. Bike is still hitting. Sitting here patiently waiting for me to turn it back on. Burning the battery down. Recorded a quick little uh, Instagram video, one minute or I'll edit that in Adobe Rush and uh, toss it up on Instagram when I get to the house. But I'm waiting to hear the sweet, sweet music again. Oh, I love it. Oops, hey. Oh, that sounds so good. I love it. And I'm not a loud exhaust guy, but damn, that sounds good. feels good let me tell you I ain't waiting This exhaust drone is not unbearable at all. In fact, it's just a little bit louder than the factory exhaust uh, under cruising, but under full throttle, it's much louder. Ugh, that was a bump. Yeah, that's what I should do later. I'll go back home, take all this crap off, and I might uh, try to set up my other camera on the rear fender and uh, do the zip tie test on the rear shocks. Check out the uh, suspension travel limit, figure out where that's at. Uh, again, filming these things and presenting them takes so much more time than just doing them, but you know, I could have done it a long time ago. I'm just trying to share the knowledge, share the fun. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, this changes the fuel economy at all. 
and I'm sure it probably will to some extent because my wrist is going to be bent further downward. <laughs> uh, but the uh, engine should breathe a little bit freer now, and that might translate to a better economy. We'll see. Uh, I like the blips. Let's put it in the uh, user mode that I had where it shifts early. It only shifts early if you're uh, out of the throttle, obviously. But it definitely doesn't have those uh, aggressive downshifts uh, in the user mode. You have to tap it yourself. It's okay though. Yep, I like it. 220 something bucks well spent. And it's a low impact upgrade, you know, if you choose to go back, it's real easy. All you did was put one little hole in that uh, exhaust right there to rivet and uh, to pull the rivet out and just drill it out. Real simple. <laughs> Watch the dog jump. Uh, okay, I'm home. Done for now. Might go out and do the zip tie test. We'll see. Thanks for tagging along.